welcome to the Jennifer James Show. Today we have my two dear friends here, Erica Davis Frimpong and Christy Record. And today we're going to be talking to you all about life as a mompreneur. But before we get started, I'll have the ladies introduce themselves. Hello, um, Erica Davis Frimpong. I'm the founder for Annie Advent Solutions and Blissima Babes Boutique. Hi, I'm Christy Record, and I am the owner of, I'm not going to list all the businesses because there's too many, um, but my main business is I'm a wedding planner, so Swanks for Ray is my wedding planning business. Awesome. And so today we're just here to, you know, just kind of inspire all of the mompreneurs out there or inspiring women or moms that are looking to step out there to become entrepreneurs that may have questions or just kind of just unsure about what that journey looks like. We're just here to kind of talk to you about what our journeys have been, what that looks like, why we decided to step out and be entrepreneurs, and what those daily duties look like along the way. So, Erica, if you can start about talking about just some of the services that your business offers and just kind of how you even got to where you are today. I actually have a background in banking. Um, I fell into it magically. It was supposed to be my pit stop job. I figured out my life. Um, that was 10 years ago. And so in that time, I worked with small business owners. So I was always on the business banking side. And I really enjoyed that, really enjoyed helping people kind of achieve their goals. But I always knew that I wanted to be on the other side of the table, you know, perhaps. Um, but I didn't know what that was. And so I didn't know what my talent was. Um, I don't really have a gift per se, like to plan events <laughs> or I'm not a hairstylist. I can't like make furniture. I felt like I didn't have anything tangible to really offer people. Um, but I know that I have a heart and mindset of wanting to always help people. That was kind of my, um, you know, good side and the downfall of my life is that I always want to help someone. Um, and so I just really got really quiet with myself, probably. I think it was like the summer of 2013 before I had my first child. Um, I found myself really frustrated with life. I was going to work every day and I was really unhappy. Um, I'd come home and I'd complain and my husband at one point told me, I don't want to hear it anymore, you know, <laughs> do something about it. And so I was really upset with him because I felt like you're supposed to listen yeah, to me. To support me. Yeah, like listen <laughs> to me then, you know, I just had to get quiet. So I didn't go out, I didn't watch TV, I didn't do anything. And I just had to figure out what is it that I can offer to the world and make a living doing it because, right. you know, <clears throat> Wells Fargo Mortgage is still owning their bill every month. Um, and I just realized that I could help people, small business owners in particular, um, make their days a little less stressful, um, make their their job of finding somebody to you know hire, help them with their business a little more cost effective. And so that's where Annie Edmund came in and I just worked on the business plan that whole summer. Um, and then we launched the following December uh, for that. So. The goal really is just to make sure that we're making sure that our clients are taking care of all their back office activities from answering their calls, scheduling their appointments, uh, doing their social media, handling their invoicing, uh, payroll, collections, anything like that, that we can you know, make that a lot easier for them to manage. And you're a mom of how many? Two, two boys. And a wife as well. Yes. So how is so three that? boys. <laughs> So how is that? How is that um, part of you know your planning for stepping out there and, and doing your own thing? Was that? Um, I just realized that once I had my first child, I wanted more flexibility mm -hmm. um, to be able to be there and be present when I felt like I needed to. And so with work, while the role that I had um, as the vice president of this bank here locally, while I had some flexibility, I really didn't. Right. You know. There were certain things I just couldn't do. Right. Um, you know, if my child was sick and I just wanted to be at home with them, I couldn't just be like, hey guys, I'm going to take off for two days. Because, <laughs> right, because my, know, kid, my is kid is coughing and I right. just want to be a mother today. <laughs> um, it didn't work like that. And then I just felt like, okay, if I really grind it out and put in the time and put in the work now, when he's 5, 10, 15, and he really has a life going on, I can be there right. because I want to be there. Um, and, that, and that was really the driving force behind it. I wanted a better life. For not only myself but uh, for my children. No, oh, I hear you, Christy. So I have never liked working for people. Um, <laughs> I think I think that has a lot to do with my personality. My husband um, uh, in, in premarital counseling, uh, the counselor coined us as freedom, and then him structure, mm -hmm. um, and that has been who I am for probably the majority of my life. Um, and so for me, I never liked working for anyone. And so I would go through these phases of job hopping and I would go back and forth like you were or one of you were saying, you didn't like being somewhere and you'd always go to the next thing. So that was me. Probably like every year or two, I'd find a new job. Right. 
Um, <laughs> and I decided one day, hey, and this is like right before or right after I had my first child, I'm not doing this anymore. So I was like, let me start this business. I lived in California and I decided I was going to be an event planner. Mm-hmm. Um, had a business partner um, and it just kind of we both weren't developed the exact same way to the business um, we were going through different life changes I was having a baby um, and with having a child there was this income that needed to happen so I went back to work but I knew this is what I wanted to do so I picked up my life and I said California doesn't work I moved to Texas and when I moved to Texas um, I met my husband and I worked a corporate job here for a while because I needed to. Obviously, I had to pay bills. And um, what drove me out finally was stress and anxiety. Mm-hmm. So the stress and anxiety, of, like you said, wanting to pick up your kids, the daycare calling because they're sick and you having to ask permission. Exactly. It's like, yeah. Uh, like, can I be a mom like today? Right. And then go back to work. Right. Tomorrow? That was like yeah. the hardest part. And so <laughs> one day after I had my third child. I was sitting at my desk and I was just like, he's sick. I think there was a tornado going on here in Dallas. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, oh no. Like, I'm, I'm not, I was like, I'm done. Yeah. And um, I think that was my last day at work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, I, and I had been running the business and the, the shadows. Right. Like I know what you mean. And I had been doing really well. So I was really stressed out too with that. Like, here I've got this really great job, but then I've got these kids and we need this insurance. Yeah. And there was just all of this juggling and, and then you're married, so there's this conversation that has to happen about about leaving this mm-hmm. corporate job. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I, I had been um, running Swag Spray all that time. Um, and I had tons of clients and it was just becoming too much for me. So yeah. I decided that I was gonna leave. Um, but for me, when I initially started Swank Foray, it was for event planning, for like parties and stuff like that. I was like, oh, this will be fun. Um, not until realizing how much work it is. Oh, yeah. So it's a ton oh, of work. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, a a, it's a ton of work. And when I got to Dallas, I got into the wedding industry and I love it. And so part of my ministry at the church is I'm in the marriage ministry. Right. Um, I am married. I'm in the marriage ministry. Mm-hmm. And so for me, the weddings, um, they're a really big deal. Mm-hmm. I don't work with everybody so just because you come to me doesn't mean we're going to work together because we need to make sure we're a good fit right um you have to understand that i'm involved in a little bit more than just your wedding like i want your wedding to be fabulous but i really want in the process for you working on your marriage right and so or your impending marriage and so that's right right. and so for me that's the biggest thing about it i think like you said for small businesses you want to help them focus on getting the back office stuff taken care of so that they can go out and sell. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of the mm-hmm. same thing That's for right. me. So I want you to be focused on this marriage that you're about to enter into, and so I want to take over the stress of planning a wedding because they're very stressful, right. um, and they take up quite a bit of time. So yeah. for me, I just love it. Like it's 15 hour days and sometimes 20, but I wake up the next day tired. I don't want to move out of my bed, but I promise you, the next day I'm like, I'll do it all over again. <laughs> And I'm glad you brought that up, the long days and just what that looks like. Because I really want to touch on just kind of giving people insight on what is your day-to-day duties. I'm talking about as a wife, like what's the first thing you do when you jump out of bed? And how do you make sure lunches and kids get to school, they get picked up in time, that you're fulfilling your schedule during the day and that you have time with your husband when needed when Mm -hmm. you get home too? How do you balance it all? Or is there really a balance? Uh, What does that look like, (laughs) Erica? Um... I, I don't feel like anyone can achieve, I'm, I'm really leery of the word balance because I feel like a lot of people have this image of perfection um, that you're supposed to achieve with this work-life balance and it's just so happy and you're just so <laughs> zen. I really don't think that exists. I think that you just have to be present in whatever you're doing throughout sure. the day. Um, I will say now, uh, when I was working, I just left my corporate career on December 2nd, which was my son's first birthday um, as a gift to myself. But, <laughs> When I was working in corporate America and running the business, um, it was chaotic because I was stretched so thin. Yeah, so my husband could ask me the smallest thing, and it was like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I got it oh, it was kind of automatically. And he's yeah. looking at me like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, what is wrong with you? Um, but now that I am fully self-employed, I try to, it's not an everyday thing, but I try to do things to let my husband know that he's special and he's important to me first thing in the morning. Like, I make him breakfast, give him breakfast in bed. It's not an everyday thing. Right. A couple days a week. Um, I make sure that my son, he just started preschool, that he's taken care of, you know, give them both baths, love on them, kiss on them, give them breakfast, Mm -hmm. get them out the door. So that's what my morning looks like. It's, It's... 
quiet, but it's chaos. But it's very structured in the sense that I know I have to do this, 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 this. I need to get up a little bit earlier right. so I can kind of have some alone time with myself to get my brain around what I need to do for that day. Drop my kid off, um, <clears throat> go to the gym. That's my time. Like, you can ask my husband, I get irritated when he calls me and I'm at the gym. It's like, you know I'm there. <laughs> Why are you calling me right now? What do you um, need? Exactly. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all. Exactly. It's like, that's my time um, to just be Erica. Yeah. I'm not someone's mother. I'm not someone's wife in that moment. Um, there, after I come home and I, I get, get ready and go into the office. Some days I work from home, some days I work in the office so that I can make sure everything's going you know, the way it really needs to be. Right. Um, my days are very strange now. Like I used to work this kind of eight to six schedule and then come home and work till one in the morning if I needed to when I was working. Um, now, you know, I kind of truly work between 11 and four. Yep. Go get my kid give them dinner, we all sit, enjoy each other, give them baths, get them to sleep, spend some time with my husband, and then I may work some more. Right. Um, there's some days where I do, there's some days where I don't, it just depends on what's going on. Yeah. Um, from that standpoint, I do like the flexibility, but I don't want to give any misconception that it's like just some leisurely life that I'm living right now. You know, yeah. For instance, I got my kids um, taken care of last night, my husband pitched in a lot, which I was thankful for, because I went back upstairs and worked for another four right. hours. Right. Um, but I think you just have to be cognizant of of your marriage. Um, I'm a big believer that if you don't put the time in with your spouse, all the stuff with your kids really won't matter, because if right. you all fall apart, yeah. what are we really talking about here? So <laughs> I really do make sure that um, we spend quality time together, whether that's just sitting in our theater and watching you know, Netflix binging yeah. on all these crazy shows that I would never spend time watching. It's just so that we can be together, you know? We don't have a babysitter, right? so we don't get to go out all the time. It's like, well, let's just sit here and enjoy each other. Yeah. Um, but I think that's really crucial because it keeps us both um, energized and wanting to you know, help the other person. Um, but you also have to have a really support supportive spouse mm -hmm. because if you don't, um, dream chasing as a woman doesn't really go well when you got kids and you know, someone that's not supportive of that dream, um, and family too, yeah. just because it takes way more than, you know, us yeah. trying to do it all. Um, so. I think you brought up a good point. Me and my husband are both entrepreneurs, as both of you guys are, and I think we had to stop talking about business every time oh, yeah. we were together. So it was almost like, okay, the kids are put down, I don't want to talk about bills, <laughs> I definitely don't want to talk about kids. And I don't want to talk about business. So right. we had to find time to step out of that because some of times we work from home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my husband goes to the office. I currently don't really have an office right now, but we just had to start dating outside this environment of our home. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? We had to start uh, actually putting things on the calendar. Um, the good thing is we do have the flexibility now. We actually do, do lunch dates. It doesn't have to always be at night. Sometimes yeah. we do brunch dates, you know, on Fridays or go to the movies. but. We try to find time to spend, you know, ways to spend time with each other other than always talking about business. Sometimes he helps support my business and I help support mm -hmm. his. So right. it was very important for us to separate the 50 million hats that we wear yeah. <laughs> throughout the day and just make sure that our marriage, like you said, um, absolutely comes first. What is your insight on that as well? Um, so it's been really hard for us, um, mainly because... Uh, my husband and I are both entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, and so it's. I think for a long time we fought on whose business was more important, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and so that was the initial fight, mm -hmm. and who should be doing what, and, and but if I get to, how come you don't get to? Um, and I think the biggest thing for us recently is that um, one of the things we did is we've been talking to some spiritual counselors mm -hmm. who reminded us of our roles, mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's been the hardest on me in terms of having to recognize that even though I have this successful business, my children and my husband and my home come first. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've had to put a lot of rules in place. So there's things that we do, um, like I go, I get up in the morning, I take one of the children to school. Immediately from there, I go straight to my office, I go work. 
Mm -hmm. um, so that gives me a head start because before when I worked from home, <laughs> let me just tell you, like if I brushed my teeth, I was doing good. If I, if I was like doing no laundry, yeah, like, like free million in it. You know, right, so I was like doing laundry, I was cooking, and I'd be at the computer or you know just different things, or I end up on Netflix. <laughs> I'm my boss, right? Um, so it was a lot of lost productivity. Right. Um, so being at the office really helps, and I leave my office at a very hard three p.m. Like sometimes. 250 to make sure I get to him on time. I don't do after school. We used to do an after school program. I stopped that because he was um, having some issues, uh, my four year old in school. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like, okay, he's spending too much time at school away from mm -hmm. home. Let, yeah. me, let me pick him up earlier um, so that he could be at home with us. And if I really need to do something, I'll pop my laptop open right. and I get home because he takes a nap at that point. Right. Um, but that, that has really helped out because now I'm home. I have a schedule and it, and it works out that way. Um, I try not to work on Mondays if I can, um, just because if I have an event the weekend before, so if I have a wedding, I'm gone right. from my kids right. um, that Friday for a rehearsal, mm -hmm. and then usually that morning, whenever they start hair and makeup, and then I'm not home until 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, so yeah. they literally don't yeah. see me all day Saturday. Yeah. So for the and sometimes and actually don't see me from Friday afternoon or from Friday when they get up from school because rehearsal usually they're getting home they're taking baths eating dinner going right. to sleep so right. then I get home they're asleep. Um, so one of the things for us and that it, like you said with your husband in the morning um, we had to institute we wake up and have morning prayer so before anybody puts a foot on a bed I mean I put a foot on the floor excuse me um, we get together and we have prayer um, we pray about. Um, our kids, our family, our marriage, just everything. Um, so that's the first thing that we do to spend the first part of the morning together and with God. Um, and then after that, we both have responsibility for one child. That's how we balance that. Uh, the oldest child is a teenager, so he can, you know, he knows what to do. But the other two are young, so he has responsibility for one. I have responsibility for the other. We agree to come home at a certain time, except for in his busy season. Right. He does taxes. Um, and we're at home by a certain time, and then we're a family. We also have rules. Mm -hmm. I put my cell phone down. At six o'clock, the cell phones go on the fireplace, right. and we're not allowed to take them down. Um, so that we can have family time, we're in tune with our kids. My oldest hates my cell phone. He's like, you're always on your phone. I hate it. Like, so no. just to have like just more of a structure. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the highs too of being a mompreneur that you can. Set your own schedule. And right. So that's one of the highs. Yeah. One of the lows is that you're always, somebody always wants you. Yep. You know, it's a little bit different. Like you have to respond. Yeah. When you, when you work, <laughs> right. When you work from 9 to 5, yeah. you left that job and you was like, peace. Like everybody. You're missing money. You see, someone calls right. You right. see right. those people who are like, those people who are like, um, is it Friday yet? I'm like, I don't even know what Friday is. Like, <laughs> please. And as a matter of fact, because I have little kids, I'm like, is it Monday yet? Right. <laughs> and you go back to school. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So what are some of the things, so we kind of talked about the highs and lows of work balances and what our day-to-day -day looks like, but what are some things, whether they're books, scriptures, or maybe there's particular sermons you listen to, and maybe it's just you simply getting on your knees and praying, like you mentioned, what are some things you do when you feel stressed and overwhelmed and just feel like, gosh, this is a big barrier to cross, you know, along the journey, like, is this even worth it? What are some things that you revert to? So for me, in particular, I love um, two sermons by T.D. Jakes, although I am an OCBFer, but Dr. Tony Evans, <laughs> love him to death. And there are two um, sermons that I listen to, um, T.D. Jakes, and one of them is Coming to Focus, and the other one is The Power of Commitment. And those things help me because there's a lot of times I feel like I'm sacrificing a lot to even be able to be an entrepreneur as a mom, you know, um, whether that's spring time or family time or vacation. I can't brunch every Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. There's just things I can't do as a mom in particular. So there's a lot of sacrifice that goes with this. Um, and so I feel like coming into focus helps me focus on what I'm trying to do and narrow the focus down and understanding that this is the season, you know, that mm -hmm. I'm in. And the other one is the power of commitment. Um, and it just reminds me that nothing comes overnight. You know, finances that's aren't looking like I want them to come or certain situations, just know that um, I'm just planting seeds and setting that foundation right now. And over time, if I stay committed to this journey, all things will come to pass. So what are some things that you all do when you're feeling overwhelmed or revert back to as a guide? Kind of like you were saying, my husband and I, we pray before we get out of bed. Um, we used to do it individually, and now we do it collectively. Uh, it's just a way for us to stay connected. Um, I have to realize that I need him, like, in my day um, to make sure that 
everything stays on track. But one of the things that I love doing, I'm really into reading different books um, to just keep me motivated and, and pushing along. But more than that, what I'll look at, if I feel like I'm overwhelmed or how am I going to climb this mountain, how am I going to get this task done, I just look back on the past. So I feel like a lot of times as people, not necessarily as women, we feel like, oh my God, the bottom is falling out and I don't know how I'm going to make it happen. Um, but think about the last time you felt like that right. and it passed. You got through it. You know, God helped you through it. So that's usually where my mind goes anytime that I find myself very stressed about a situation. Mm -hmm. I'll think about the last time I felt that same way. And, you know, miracle. It's, miracle. it's already been taken care of. Right. Um, this year was particularly very crazy for us. Um, we experienced all types of things, um, job loss, um, just, you know, health scares, family members, different things going on. Anything that you could think that could knock me off the plan that sure. I had, you know, that I felt like God gave me three years ago, happened. Mm -hmm. um, and so there were so many times where I found myself thinking, it's not going to happen. Like, I don't know how I'm going to make this work. Um, you know, I have these clients. Am I really going to be able to service them? We're growing at this certain pace. Um, but yet I'm not in a place where I can yet take on another employee because there's three of us right now. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just different things that just kind of stress you and you, you can mind, like mind think something to death. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you just really need to focus on God has already brought me through A, B, C, D, probably all the way to Z. Mm -hmm. You right. probably named 26 things that he's brought you through. So why would he not be able to get me through this? That's right. And so the one thing that I have to tell myself is I'm not superwoman. I'm very... I want to do everything myself, I want to solve everything myself, I want to fix it all, um, and I just really had to come to grasp with the fact that I'm not superwoman, and I don't claim to be, and I don't want to be, really, at all, um, and so let me just sit back and just let him do what he's going to do, and so if people, I think, if we would just focus on the fact that God put this in your heart, you know, right. God put your vision for uh, my active ego in your heart, it wasn't a lie, like, it wasn't something you just thought of, so <laughs> let him do what he's going to do to help you achieve those different things. Um, and I think we create more stress for ourselves just trying to constantly manipulate our lives and, and do it ourselves. So mm -hmm. it's hard. It was a hard lesson. It's probably the biggest faith walk I've ever had in life and brought me closer to God um, in trying to get this business up and running. Um, but if I sit back, shut up, just get quiet with him, <laughs> I notice it really yeah. all takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you look back, you laugh because you're like, oh, well, this was turning into this and this was happening for this reason. Um, but when you're in the midst of it, you can either make it worse or you can make it better. And, and it's hard to say because, because I see people in my life now that I just <laughs> never really knew why they're in my life. Right, right now they're like seeing the YouTube ladies. You know right. what I mean? Like who would have said two years from now, three years from now, we'd be sitting here talking about wow. all the commonalities that we have yeah, for sure. with just being women. So, um, so what about you? Like what are some scriptures, books, or what do you... Do when you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed. So, if you walked into my bathroom um, on my side, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, on my mirror, I use I have a, um, a dry erase marker, and when I need it, um, and, and this is probably what helped me through some of the roughest times. Though, is that I've always had, especially when I first left corporate full time, is I put on my mirror, um, "Let your faith be bigger than your fears," mm -hmm. um, and that is because like you said or you know some of the things that i referenced before which is uh here here's an example a friend of mine the other day we were having lunch and she said something to the, uh, the effect of oh you and your husband you guys have your own your own businesses and you're doing this and you're doing that and it was almost in a like well look at what you're doing and you have so much more than i do in that way mm -hmm. and i said i grabbed her hand and i said honey let me tell you something <laughs> With all of what you see comes a ton of sacrifice. It does. A ton. It does. I it was does. just like, if one of us got really, really sick, we would be in so much trouble. That's true. And I was just telling her, and I said, um, you know, it takes me away from my children sometimes, even though it gives me more time with my children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes me away from my children. Um, and I explained to her that, you know, I don't, I, I don't look at my, my account on Friday and see a, a paycheck deposit. You know what I mean? Right. You have to hustle and get your um, right. And I said, and, and I explained to her, I said, you know, if a client decides that they're not going to pay, you become a bill collector, and if you don't get it, you have to have uh, been so faithful and diligent in your money and your finances, right. a good steward that 
you guys will be okay. That's That's right. it. So it's definitely not as glamorous as it seems. That's right. um, it's um, it's give and take. I gave up some things right. to get some things. things. Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. And that's another thing. I don't think it's not. Understand. We don't get together and just drink and just this party is, it up every day. This, really right. This is not housewives. <laughs> Right. This you is not I have to take up my children. Right. Um, I have to cook. And yeah. You know, right. it's, it's a job. Right. I don't want to call out, like, I'm not going to name names, but I know when she watches this, she'll know it's her. Uh, <laughs> but, like, my very first week after I left corporate America, a really good friend of mine, she called me and she was like, hey, girl, let's go get lunch. And, and I'm like, what? Like, I can't even <laughs> think about food right now. Like, I got things to do. Like, <laughs> I'll get back with you. And it, it literally took me two weeks to get back with her just to go get dinner. I was like, no, during the day, I cannot do that, yeah. you know, because if I'm, if I'm sacrificing the time that I'm investing in my business, I can't be mad when it doesn't, you know. <laughs> right. <Hey. laughs> yeah. that's, so. So that's one of the, one of the lows, though, <laughs> is that you can't just call out. You can't be like, oh, you know what? I'm tired. I'm not going to work today. No, because there's no sick time. No. <laughs> I had a friend. I'm not going to call her out. But when we went to lunch, she felt like I could have expensed it on my business. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't do that either. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, there are some things that people think. I mean, we're, we are entrepreneurs and we're business owners, but we're not multi-million dollar uh, yeah. corporations. Not yet. <laughs> right. Not yet. Right. And that's another thing, too. So, there's no W-2. So when tax time <laughs> flows around, we are paying taxes. Yeah. We are not receiving a refund. So we are not an H&R block like, let's do this. We are at home like, when's the deadline? Extension. Right. There you go. There you go. I file in October. That's awesome. So before we uh, close today, I did want um, each of us to go around the table and kind of give advice to all the women, the moms, and also the current moms that are entrepreneurs. Advice for 2017, just kind of to kick off a year strong. Um, anything you would you know tell them in the midst of it all to just remember, you know, while you're going through this journey because we all, as we know, that it's not easy. And we have a lot of women out there wondering this, how does how does so and so just juggle everything? Don't we have the same twenty four hours, you know, in a day? So what advice would you give someone um, that's looking to either jump into the entrepreneur world or that's currently there that um, that just needs worth encouragement? I would first say that um, we're not perfect. Um, you're not perfect. It's like you said, we're not super women. Um, there are days that you know, I took my boys to the movies yesterday. And I almost had a meltdown in the theater. Actually, last night I thanked God. Like I literally prayed to God and said, God, thank you. Thank you for giving me the strength to take these toddlers to the movies, both boys. Your one is like, I gotta go pee. <laughs> right? so I, I was just, I just thanked him for, uh, for that patience, for one. Um, so just know that you're not perfect. Know that um, when it comes to having children and have a family and wanting to have a business, that there are going to be some things that aren't going to go right. right and be okay with that that's the biggest thing it's just don't expect that it's going to be perfect that's probably one of the biggest things the other thing is communicate with your spouse if you're married communicate 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 with your spouse and don't communicate like oh i said make sure that they heard <laughs> because if they did don't send hear, a text message mm -hmm. yeah make sure that they heard um kind of what you were saying and i would just say that um Pray about it. Like, that's the biggest thing is that you really have to make sure that you heard from God before you kind of make that move. And I think that um, one of the things that our pastor says, and I say our, um, you should come visit, <laughs> uh, is that Tony Evans told us, it tells us that um, it's confirmation. Yeah. So it, you'll, it'll be confirmed three times before you know, but get that confirmation before you jump out in faith. Um, because if you don't, if you, you said, if you do it your way, it's not going to, it doesn't be all these roadblocks um, that may not have been there if you had just been patient and you waited on it. And that's the other thing. So that's the biggest takeaway for you is be patient. I started my business in 2004. I didn't fully leave corporate for the longest stretch of time. I left twice, but then I had kids and went back for insurance purposes. But the last time I left corporate for the long haul was in 2014. So it took me 10 years to fully burnt out mm -hmm. my business and be a full-time wedding planner and it to, to support my house fully mm -hmm. and it to sustain itself and give me everything I need, have an office out of my home, mm -hmm. um, all that. Ten years. Mm -hmm. Some people I watch and it happens overnight. 
don't chase someone else's dream. That's right. Get what's for you, and God knows what he has for you in advance. So just don't go looking at someone else and say, but she did it. You're not Becky Sue. That's You're right. whoever you are. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> wow. Um, so I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, if, if you really look at the full timeline, like we were talking about, it took 10 years for you to do that. When I originally first had the idea, I had a partner. We tried to do some things together. It didn't work out. We wasted a lot of money, time, energy, and effort. And then I walked away from that idea because I was just like, ugh, this was horrible. It was a horrible experience. And that was back in at least 2009 because it was before I was married. Um, you know, fast forward to today. The, the biggest thing is, is I really wish that social media is a gift and a curse because mm -hmm. people see a glimpse of what's going on. They don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes that you're doing to just post that glimpse that they can see. Um, and I think that a lot of people, women, you know, I have friends that have ideas and they want to start these different businesses and they want to do other things. Um, they allow their fear to block them. And so I don't think anyone person has more ability or talent than someone else. You just have to want it more. And you have to have a plan. You can't just jump out the window. But you have to have a plan, but then you have to move your feet, you know, mm -hmm. get to work. And I think that's where a lot of people get caught up. They're mm -hmm. constantly planning and thinking and organizing and trying to tweak and do all these things. In the process, you've wasted years. And someone else is already on it. Mm -hmm. Someone else is already on it. And then you're mad because you're like, well, heck, I was going to do that, blah, 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 you know, and it's just like, so do it already. Right. Um, but take the time to make sure that you know that your business model works, that right. it's sustainable. Um, I had to get, I'm a, I'm a numbers person, you know, being in banking, I had to get really real with our household expenses um, and knowing from, you know, mortgage to Netflix subscriptions and all these other little random subscriptions I found out we were paying for that I don't know why we were paying for. Um, you know, what are we really spending our money on? Right. What is it really going to take for us to live? I didn't know that number. If you don't know that number, then you don't need to walk away from your job. Good point. So Very if you don't know to the penny what it costs for you to live and that's eating out, that's all the fun things, not your bills, but what it really costs, you're not ready to walk away. Uh, if you don't know what it takes to earn, you know, enough revenues to sustain, not only sustain your business, but pay your expenses for your bills and your taxes, <laughs> you're not ready to walk away. Uh, and I think a lot of times, you know, especially in my, my time in working with small business owners, people fail because they don't have a financial plan. Like, they don't even know what it takes to run their own business. Yep. That's half the battle. Um, but the other part is you have to move your feet. You can't sit there and expect, like, Okay, I'm in business now, and all these people are gonna call me. It doesn't happen like that. They like, don't you know gotta, who you are. They don't even know who you are. They don't know you're sitting in your house like mm -hmm. with this grand scheme, and you know, and you may have a very awesome service or product um, to offer the world. But if you're not out there putting yourself out there, if you're not following up with people, it may take you 10, 12 times before somebody says yes. You know, this is the right thing for me. Um, you have to stay on top of your game, and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is they think there's some type of instant success like I just have this great idea or I have this great service and I'm really good at it and it should just work it doesn't work like that work um, and that's <laughs> the part that I wish you know people would be more real about and and that you could almost sometimes somehow showcase it it's not pretty so I'm not gonna post it you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> but it's like that that's just the reality of it and mm -hmm. it's I think it's one part financial one part having a plan and then acting on that plan mm -hmm. Um, versus overthinking everything and not getting anything done in the meantime. I think both of you make really good points. Um, I'm that friend that's had like 20 businesses yeah, and, too. and executed on like one, and that's the one that I have. Um, I'm that friend that's also started businesses with these good friends. Um, I had a couple friends in particular at the very end that we were all very good and very had our own niche, had our own niche, but it just didn't work out. It didn't right. take. We didn't grow until we actually separated and did our own thing. Mm -hmm. right. And then maybe one day in the future we'll all come back together and do it. But the other point I want to make is you guys both describe commitment pretty much. You talked about ten years for your business, and you talked about being committed to your household and your family in terms of knowing the finance, the numbers, and just understanding mm -hmm. what it takes. Um, it takes commitment um, in order to do that. Um, my advice is just stay committed no matter what it looks like. Um, you'll have the good days and you'll have bad days. Um, but staying committed to your journey is very important. 
The other part to, um, at least in my story, is having that foundation. I think that's very important. Um, I look at um, something that um, our pastor once said, um, how vegetation occurs. When um, crops are growing or even flowers are growing, a lot of people would grab the gift, which is the crop right. or the flowers, but they never really look at the solid foundation. <laughs> and that's something that you have to have, what, um, coming from a spiritual end, just coming from within you, um, your family, and just knowing your boundaries and knowing what you have to do to get there. Um, none of us could have built what we have on a shaky foundation. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. So I think commitment, I know for a fact commitment ties into that and being able to be stable and, and grounded in what you're doing and believing in what you're doing. So those are the tad bits of advice I would give and you know just being patient with that comes patience. You know, you don't nothing comes overnight. Some people do have overnight, like you said, and it's great, but um anything worth having is worth the time. So I would definitely um say that's my tip of advice. Um before we close, um tell everyone how they can follow you and how they could um look into more services about each of your businesses. Um, yeah, you can find me at www.annieadmin.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, it's all Annie Admin. It's really easy. Um, as well as our boutique, which is Bellissima Babes Boutique. You can find us on IG and Facebook. You can find us, um, I'm going to spell it because people usually can't. But <laughs> So uh, you can find me at swanksoiree.com, which is S-W-A-N-K-S-O-I-R-E-E. Um, dot com, and you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all under those same handles. It's just Swanks Word the Company, so it's facebook.com forward slash the business name. Awesome. And as you all know, you can find me at myactivego.com. Follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at myactivego.com. And you can also find me, Jennifer James, the host at Carpypreneur on Instagram. Well, thank you ladies so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun and I hope all of you got all the words of encouragement and some of your questions and questions answered. Please be sure to tune in next week as we discuss our new topics. Talk to you soon. Bye.